Rub up your engines! Charlie B says, my car keeps smelling the same. What can I do? Well, is it a good smell or a bad smell? <laughs> you know, new cars have that new car smell. Actually, the new car smell is bad for you. It is the outgas of stuff from all the plastic that's inside the car. So it's actually not a good thing for you, that new car smell. Bad odors. First thing you got to do is figure out, what is it? Where is it coming from? Most of the time, it's coming from inside your dash, from either the heating or the air conditioning system. Because when you're on your air conditioner, you get condensation and the water drips into the bottom of the evaporator and then it's supposed to drip under the car in a drying tube. But it's always moist and dark in there. Perfect for mold and bacteria to grow. If you're finding stuff from there, you want to clean it out and you either get one of those sprays that you can buy that's especially made for cleaning mold and bacteria in AC evaporators or something universal like any spray stuff like Lysol. And spray the heck out of it with the AC on full blast outside air. Then roll the windows down and air it out overnight if you got a garage to put it in. That's what you want to start if you think it's mold and bacteria coming out. Pork chops, puppy. Scotty, I have a middle aged friend who thinks they need to start their cars and let them run on cold mornings. I told them it's not the 1940s anymore. Oil pressure is almost instant and tight tolerance and thin oil. They're wasting gas. What do you think? Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, if you live in Alaska and it's winter and it's freezing cold, yeah, you're going to have to warm it up to get it going anyways because it's so cold there. But normal driving, you can just start and go in the summer. It makes no difference whatsoever. That oil's thin, and once you start it up within 5, 10 seconds, it's flowing through all over the place. Uh, the only real reason to warm it up is as if it's cold outside and you want to get ice off. you got to melt the ice with heat, so it's better to turn the car on turn the heat on and have it blowing at the window because you don't want super hot air hitting the window. It might crack. If you start with cold and as it warms up, it gets warmer, 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 then it can melt the ice and not do any damage. Don Rod says, yo, Scotty, should I buy a Hummer H2? What you want to spend, what you want to get, and how much money you want to spend for gasoline. You notice they don't make Hummers anymore? Well, there's a reason they don't make Hummers anymore because they weren't that well made. And my customers that had them, hey, they all had problems with them, and I don't have any customers left with Hummers. They all got rid of them because too much stuff. The electronics would break. The transmissions would go out. The gasoline engines would break on them. That said, some guys like them as a toy, a weekend toy. And if you want a weekend toy, you can get them used pretty cheap nowadays. And if you can get one that it still runs and shifts halfway decently and you want a toy, you might go ahead, but don't get one for an everyday driver. That would be a mistake. Leon 520, Scotty, I got a problem. 2007 Dodge Caliber. I know, lots of laughs. The heat comes out of the driver's side, but not the passenger side. Okay, what you've got is very typical on those things. You have something wrong with the actuator inside your dash. Uh, it is a little motor that when you turn it to heat, the computer controls that actuator to open the door up so that hot air blows on that side. It's blowing on the driver's side, which means the driver's side actuator is, is working, I mean, and the passenger side actuator is not working. Now, it could even be in the control unit or the wiring or the actuator. That's why with all those things, you're going to have to pay a guy like me that has a dealer level Dodge scan tool and he has the ability to do bi-directional controls where you can open it up with the control unit and then look at your computer and it'll say if the control unit sent a message to the actuator and if the actuator received it and then if the actuator opened so you can do it rather than guessing because anywhere you go, you're going to have to tear that dash apart and it's an expensive endeavor. DJ Arc Force says, congratulations on 2 million subscribers. Scotty, are you going to be like all the other guys and change? No, I'm not going to change at all. I have no interest in changing at all. People meet me in the real world, they say, hey, Scotty, you're just like you are in your videos. Because yes, I am. This is what I'm like. It drives my wife nuts sometimes. I'm here to help people out, just like my grandfather helped people out back in the day. He didn't charge people much for fixing their cars. He liked helping people out. I like helping people out too. Since I don't have any sponsors, I don't have to tell lies like a lot of other people do about how great some product is when in actuality it's either not that good at all or it's extremely overpriced and you could get something that works exactly the same for less money. That's the kind of stuff that I want to help people out with. That's what I'm here for. And I'm not going to change at all because it's too much fun. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.